Welcome to another episode of Commercial Property Roadshow. This is Helen Tarrant. Now, today I want to cover with you commercial versus residential, but this is regarding the cost of getting into a property. Um, there's been lots of questions asked of me about how much it costs to get into a commercial versus a residential property. So this explains a little bit of the cost. So in commercial property, you're going to find the LVR or the loan to rate the valuation ratio is going to be lower than your traditional residential property but there's no such thing as lenders mortgage insurance or lmi as they call it in the residential space so the main cost in commercial property is getting in is probably your deposit because it's going to be larger than your residential it's going to be your valuation fees because you'll have to pay for that um, the bank don't cover the valuation fees there's going to be some establishment fees for the loan itself and that's usually a percentage of the loan or depending on the loan product you get they may actually waive that for you as well depending on your loan type and how long on which bank it is and the specials and promotions they're doing um, on top of that you're gonna have your solicitors fees your pest and building inspections uh, as well as uh, potentially a strata search and if you're engaging in bias agents or um, other specialist consultants there's going to be a fee for that so your your basic costs are going to be firstly your deposit which let's take that aside because you're going to need that in residential as you do in commercial but your valuation fees can range anywhere from say around eleven hundred fifteen hundred dollars so one thousand five hundred dollars anywhere up to maybe about four thousand dollars depending on the size of property so if you're buying a property around say five to eight hundred thousand dollars and the fee could be somewhere around um maybe potentially about eleven hundred to fifteen hundred dollars and the turnaround time is somewhere between five to seven days possibly ten days depending on the value you choose and the location of your property so if the property is not in metro it's in regional areas it's going to take a little bit longer for the valuer to come back with it um the establishment fee it's usually a few thousand dollars usually it's a percentage it might be um half of one percent um of your entire loan Loan or a quarter of one percent or if you're getting um, a bigger loan it might be something like point zero six five percent of a one percent so it all depends on the bank um, on whether they're waiving that fee whether they're doing a promotion or not so those are the major costs of course solicitors cost is somewhere around uh, your solicitor's cost is going to be somewhere around maybe two thousand, two and a half thousand, including your um, disbursements. That depends on how hard the transaction is. So if the transaction requires multiple negotiations, so you've got a lease you have to negotiate, uh, you've got extensions. Um, let's say that your finance takes a little bit longer. Uh, let's say there's amendments to the contract. All of those things might might bring that cost up to more about four grand. But usually the benchmark is around two and a half thousand dollars in terms of um, the solicitor's fees. Now your additional pest and building, it's somewhere I like to budget around anywhere from five hundred dollars for a smaller property, anywhere up to fifteen hundred dollars for a slightly larger property. And if you're looking at um, buyers agency fees, they sometimes can be one or two percent of your purchasing cost, or there might be a flat rate as well. So. So that um, depending on who and if you want us to help you find the property um, we charge a pro rata rate as well but we have a flat rate as well depending on the level you are at but we're happy to have a chat to you about that but that's essentially your commercial property cost now going into the residential space uh, what you have is the bank will absorb the valuation fee so there's no valuation fee for you they will most likely not charge you an establishment fee in this current market. They might charge you a slight fee, about $1,000 to as a handling fee. They might call it an establishment fee. They may call it um, an approval fee or commitment fee. They might, so, um, they might charge you a small nominal amount. And really, that's really the basis of your loan. There's no additional cost to that. Of course, um, you'll still have to pay for your pest and building reports, uh, regardless of whether you have a residential or commercial property. And they range about the same. I think residential a little bit cheaper they're probably somewhere under a thousand dollars for it uh, but also uh, if you're buying a strata property in commercial as well as in residential you will need to search agent for that and that costs around three hundred and thirty dollars as well now on top of that if you have 20% deposit in residential then uh, you are go not gonna need what they call LMI which is a lenders mortgage insurance if you don't then there's gonna be a lenders mortgage insurance which is a percentage of the amount that's 
of the 10 percent so and that can amount to quite a few thousand dollars so that could be anywhere from five to ten or sometimes even fourteen fifteen thousand dollars depending on the size of the property so that's really on your own situation if you don't need it that's a cost to avoid so the LVR in, in residential if you want to avoid uh, lenders mortgage insurance is usually 80 percent and you may be able to go higher depending on the bank itself the loan term is also longer you might find that it's 25 years or 20 years or 30 years uh, whereas in commercial somewhere at 10 20 or even up to 25 years now in commercial uh, in special conditions they can do it for 80 percent uh, but typically it's somewhere around 70 75 percent in a typical loan um, and if you can't service and you're only doing a lease stock loan which is based on the tenant themselves then it's 65 percent so those are the two costs so you're going to get more costs in terms of commercial but also remember that commercial gives you more cash flow as well at the end so those costs are a cost that's a tax deductible uh, but over over time, the cash flow you're going to come in in the first year of your commercial property is going to outweigh the cost you spend on it. So it's more expensive to get in, but it also means it gives you greater cash flow in the long run. In residential, it's a game you hold out for the back end, which means it is a capital gains game. So you wait for the capital growth to happen in, in the property. So which means that even though you're having less costs up front, uh, the little costs that you're going to fork out in the rest of the year, if you take the property and you compare it, what's going to cost you in the first year of the property you'll find that potentially you'll be negative five or ten thousand dollars on a residential deal so if you compare that uh to commercial in the first year you'll find that the cost actually even itself out and you actually get more cash flow out of the commercial property but either way it's always good to go in with eyes wide open so that you know what the cost is associated with neither good or bad but my advocate is find a positive cash flow property whether it's in commercial or residential and if you want us to help you with a strategy of commercial go to helentarrant.com and send me an email otherwise uh, hit the bell hit subscribe and i see you on the next episode bye for now